the word of God for you is the broken heart of God. Someone said the broken heart of God. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 1. There is a call for the lost. There is a call for them that are, are bound. There is a call for them that are distressed. And it is God's, God has put that burden, not in a bad way, but God has put that mantle, that weight upon us to be the ones that are going. The thing is, we are entertained by ourselves. We're busy about our own thing. We are busy about things that do not relate to the kingdom. And so it's like, God, thank you for blessing me. You know that in the kingdom of God and in church, it's not about what can be done for you. Hallelujah. It's not about what kind of, I need to go to church, man. I need a miracle. Yes, there's, there's a place for that. But the gathering of the saints and, and what God is doing in this house is gathering a, a, a remnant, a battle cry, soldiers who are ready to say, yes, Lord. The Bible says that a soldier does not concern himself with civilian affairs. A soldier, amen. <laughs> a soldier speaking over there, amen. When you are on the battlefield, you can't be concerned about you know, who, who likes my, my, is you call it a, a dog tag, is that you guys call it? Okay, who likes my chain, you know, is my outfit looking sharp enough? You, you are running for your life. You, you are fighting, you are warring, you are achieving mission. You are not worried about what people think about you. Amen. When you are distracted, you will lose focus. And how many of us have taken our eye off the mission of God? The mission of God is that all men will come to know him. That is, the, that is your most important assignment. I shared a series a, a few years ago about your purpose and your destiny. All of that is wrapped up in your service of God. Your destiny must be found in God's destiny. Your destiny must be found in God's plan. God has a plan for the nations. God has a plan for the world. If your plan does not fit into God's plan for the world, it is not his plan for you. Why would God give you a different plan and ask you to join him when he's going one way and you're going another? So in this pursuit of my destiny and my calling and all of that, it can't be outside of the salvation of souls. It can't be independent of this is what God wants me to do or this is what God wants for his people. We can't get so caught up in our vision, in what we want to do for our lives. You know, how can I be better this year? You know, yes, those are all important, but they are secondary to the primary assignment. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. And uh, I guess, you know, it's, 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 it's in order that we ask God to forgive us and we pastors ask God to forgive us that we don't wait until missions month to, to, to remind us the souls must be saved every single day, every single moment. We must be in sync with God. Somebody say amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 1. Bible says that the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, uh, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, unto the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Somebody say amen. All that is the beginning, is the introduction of Pastor Jeremiah. Somebody say amen. He's been introduced to us and uh, he served many kings of Judah. He served through many times. So this word of the Lord that he, he gives us in Jeremiah is not, it's not a one moment thing. He has been saying and speaking these words for a very, very long time. The people of God have come in, in, into the promised land. Things are going well. They've had some kings obedient, some disobedient, up and down. Uh, but then eventually the temple was restored and the people began to love the temple. Temple, 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 temple. Oh, my temple. Oh, beautiful temple. Oh, what a glorious temple. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that temple. So they began to get their security and their confidence in temple. Every time Jeremiah will give a word of repentance, like surely God would not destroy this pretty, pretty temple. 
I love my temple. And so they lost the heart of God, finding their security in something else. They will not repent because the temple was still there. They will not repent in, in, in life uh, uh, because I have been sinning and it's been going okay. So why should I repent right now? That crazy show that came up, preachers of LA or preachers of Chicago or I don't know where they came from. Um, but one of them boldly said, his fiancée said, it is time for us to get married. They have been living together. He said, it is time for us to get married. He said, why are you rushing this? We have been doing this for a long time and God has still blessed it. This is what happens. Temple, 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 temple. I am doing wrong, but I got the temple. And you know, God hasn't punished me yet. God, no, everybody still loves me. Everything is still going well. Why should I repent? Why should I change my ways? Because everything is going well. You fall in love with the things and lose heart for God. Somebody say amen. And when it comes to missions, when it comes to reaching the lost, when it comes to serving God with all of our heart, we get caught up in what can God do for me? We get caught up in this, what I need right now. The Bible says, as they went, they were healed. And there is a power of healing and anointing that comes upon your body, upon your life, when you begin to go with God. When you are about God's business, He supplies every need because He wants you to fulfill His plan for your life. Somebody say amen. I pray that even, even, even as we have, we have prayed this morning and as the Word of God comes, you, you begin to... Um, Realign yourself with God's assignment, with God's heart. That means that some things got to drop off. That means some people got to fall off. That means some, some, some dreams got to fall off. It's, it's, it's going to cost you something, child of God. If you're going to love God and, and, and receive all His glory and all His power, it's going to cost you something. Somebody say amen. It is, it, is, it, is, it is real, it is true that the closer you get to God, the less friends you will get. Because then, see, God begins to refine. God begins to refine. And the comfort of, of, of a crowd no longer fulfills you. Now you are looking for men and women who will sharpen you, who will speak into that situation that God has called you to. How can you encourage me to fulfill what God has called me to do? No longer crazy, unnecessary business, but now you are... Set your face as a flint on the things of God. And until you are that, you will not be effective. Paul says that I do not fight like one beating the air. You know, there's somebody somewhere. I know that, you know, that's, that's waste of energy. Um, but focus. And many of us have lost our focus. That when God says, give up something for me, when God says, do something for me, it becomes a debate. It becomes a congress becomes God, okay, tell your angels, write up the bill, submit it to my kingdom, you know, we will, we will review it if we agree, they will send it to our senate, if they agree, they will come up with a joint bill, with the edits, and if you don't like it, we'll veto you. Many, <laughs> many of you have vetoed God. God said, do something, you processed it, you looked at your license, and you said, no God, not today. <laughs> no, no, Jesus, no. And you keep on doing that, and you keep moving further away from God, building a kingdom and a temple of your own where God does not dwell. So Jeremiah is introduced here. He's a prophet, and he was right before the invasion of Babylon. Babylon came, King Nebuchadnezzar came in and gathered the people and took them away. And that's where Daniel was taken captive, and then he went into Babylon, and that's where the book of Daniel was written. But Jeremiah was announcing it many years before. Daniel came. So now that you know Jeremiah, let's go to chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. <clears throat> Bible says, moreover, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord, I remember the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothed Betrothal, betrothal, somebody say it again. Betrothal, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> you Americans. <laughs> we speak the Queen's British English, amen. Betrothal, betrothal. 
Be truthful. Oh, be truthful. Be truthful. <laughs> be true. Be true. Okay, that word. Amen. <laughs> hey, glory be to God. I thank God that the anointing is not based on an accent. Hallelujah. <laughs> that would have killed it right there. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> what does your version say? <laughs> Thank you, spousal. Amen. <laughs> we are going to move that one here. I remember you, the kindness of your youth and the love of your spousal. <laughs> when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land not sown, Israel was holiness to God, to the Lord. The first fruit of his increase and all that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Verse number four, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? Neither did they say, where is the Lord, who brought us up out of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed or where no one dwelt. I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruits and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land and my heritage an abomin and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handled the Lord did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The Prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Therefore, I will not yet bring charges against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children, I will bring charges. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus and see, send to Kedar and consider diligently and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods anyways? But my people have changed their glory. Some version says, but my people have changed my glory. For what does not profit? Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Last verse. For my people have committed, what? Two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns. Broken cisterns or wells that do not hold water. Hallelujah. God wants to admonish us today. Get us back in line with the things of the Spirit. Get us back in the things of God. Let's, let's look at verse, just a few verses in there and then we'll, we'll jump to conclusion. It says, I remember your, the kindness of your youth, the love of your spousal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land not sown. This is, this, is, this, is the, this is the broken heart of God speaking. God's heart is broken over Israel's rebellion. And he's saying, I remember when you were kind to me. What happened? I remember when you used to follow me in the wilderness. Who follows someone into a wilderness? But because you loved me and you were pursuing me, you didn't care where I was. You didn't care where I led you. So far as you were with me, it was okay. And so you were following after me uh, through the layoff and the, and, the, and, the, and the rejection and the abandonment and the foreclosure and the bankruptcy and through, through every sickness. You, you, you used to chase after me. But what happened? When you used to be kind to me, He's saying that the fact that you are no longer with me is you being unkind. Kindness is related to being with him. He says, when you were younger, man, so I'm just going to summarize it. Remember the highest place of your joy with God. When you were serving God with every bit of your heart and you were excited and you were chasing after God. What happened to that level? 
What happens to that level where you will abandon everything to go pray? You, you, will, you will tell anybody about Jesus. If they breathed, you told them the dog, the cat. I mean, you were willing to share the gospel with anybody who would just listen. What happened? Your father is asking you, what happened? What happened to that place where we were together? What happened? Said Israel was holiness to me, the first food of my increase. All that devour him and offend him, he will, he, will, he will destroy. And so we are still special in his heart. But he's crying out and saying, my people have deserted me. Hallelujah. My people have forgotten about what I want. My people have forgotten about what I'm asking them to do. My people have forgotten about just coming into my presence and just loving me and just being with me. Jump all the way to verse number 11. The Bible says that has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods anyways, but my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. My people have changed their glory for what does not profit. If you hold your, your hand over there, go to the book of Jonah. Just hold your place over there. We'll be back there soon. Jonah chapter 2. Hosea, Joel, Obadiah. Jonah, Micah. Right before Micah. Jonah chapter 2, verse number 8. <clears throat> Bible gives us this, this word. Those who regard worthless idols do what? Forsake their own mercy. Mm. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Those who pursue worthless idols forsake their own mercy. There's a plan of God for your life. There's a richness of God. See, God's, God's word that he, he, he was speaking to the people was like, we have so much going for us. Don't interrupt what's going for us with an idol. Don't interrupt all the goodness. Or I brought you into, into a great land, and, but there you are followed after worthless idols, worthless relationships, worthless situations, worthless conversations, worthless engagements, worthless business, worthless everything in contrary to what God has called you to do. The moment you pursue that, you forsake the glory of God. And the glory of God is everything. The glory of God, Bible says, my presence will distinguish you. And the glory of God is the heaviness and the weightedness of the presence of God. And so the presence of God weighted upon me leaves an imprint. And people are like, you're different. Well, I am different because I have a different inscription upon my life. I am distinguished because of the weight of the presence of God, his glory upon my life. And so what are the worthless idols that you have been pursuing? What are the worthless things that you have put before God? And, and, and this is, is to just encourage you. Yes, come up higher because you are letting the little things interfere with what I've called you to. You are letting your own mission, your own assignment, your own purpose. And, and, and the saddest thing will be that at the end of it, or God will say, I love you, you are my child, but you did not fulfill what I called you to. That's sad. And especially when you think you are doing God's work. Especially when you think you are obeying God. And you are building your own kingdom. You are doing your own thing. Hallelujah. Are you here with me, church? Let's go to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Verse number 20. If, if uh, sound booth, if we can, I, I don't want to forget this, so that's why I'm throwing this in there. Let's, let's get the message, uh, reverse Ichabod, restore my glory. It's somewhere in there. Just find it and, and, and later make copies for everybody. I want everybody to have that message. Reverse Ichabod, restore my glory. Very important. Amen. 106 verse number 20. The Bible says that, 
Thus they changed their glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. Go to verse 13. Same place. Psalm 106 verse 13. It says that they soon forgot. After I brought them into the, the good land and, and, and I, I saved them and I was just bringing them out. The Bible says, well, they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel. You became your own God. I can decide my own thing. I do what I want. It's my life and I do what I want. And wisdom and counsel and the word of God and Holy Spirit is telling you don't do this, but you are your own government. Verse 14, but they lasted, they lasted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. They that observe lying vanities shall forsake their own mercy. That's the King James. They that observe lying vanities shall forsake their own mercy. They that pursue worthless idols will forsake their own mercy. Those who engage and change the glory of God upon your life, bowing down to sin, bowing down to the flesh, bowing down to your own agenda, you will forsake the power of God in your life. That's why you are so tired. You are trying to build your own kingdom and putting God's name on it. And God's like, no, I don't do that. You can't just slap my name on something and expect me to be there. Doesn't work like that, right? I pray that you are beginning to evaluate life. Evaluate yourself. Evaluate what God has called you to do. And begin to say, every lying vanity in my life, everything that is not of God, that is contrary to God's plan in my life, I let it go. Say with me, in the name of Jesus, I renounce every agreement, every covenant with an idol in the name of Jesus. Anything and anyone I have put in the place of God, I release right now in the name of Jesus. I set my heart, I set my mind, I set my affection on Jesus, on Jesus alone. Amen. Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. Hallelujah. This, this is what you need to set you up to have increase in your life. Amen. If you are pursuing your own kingdom, you can, you can expect the increase of man, but it will not be the increase of God. Amen. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 27. The Bible says that hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. If you are willing to get everything in your life set in place, then I will obey God. If you are willing to have everything go the way you want, then, then you can testify um, that God is doing everything. Man, God is checking things off on my list. Mm -hmm. If that's what you're waiting for, it says that the eyes of man are never satisfied. That's why the one who makes 40,000 says, ah, all I need is another 20, man. Who 20, I'll be set. The one who makes 60 is like, Shh, man, 100, man, that's a goal. Like, man, just, man, I'll be good. The one who makes 100 says 250. 250 says 500. Somebody says, I'm broke. I only have 2.5 million in my account. <laughs> broke is relative. Amen. <laughs> it's very relative. Somebody's broke is 36 cents. I have been there. Hallelujah. And somebody's broke is 2.5. Oh my God, the stock market. I just lost $500,000. My portfolio has come down to $6 billion. Oh my God. They start panicking because they got $6 billion. Hell and destruction are never satisfied. Man, so you can't wait to have everything. What does it profit a man when he gains the whole world? And loses his soul. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things shall be added unto you. It is a lie of the enemy to put shiny things in front of you. And make you think that that is God. 
He's moving you away from God. Seek God, and in God, you will lack nothing. In God, you will have abundance. In God, listen, sometimes it is, it is, it is good not to have the, that, that, uh, that extra toy because you learn to appreciate God. Amen. I, 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 I thank God. I thank God for his blessing, and, uh, and uh, I'm a country boy. I'm really, really, listen, give me land. Take away the noise. Take away all the traffic. Give me, give me a lake or a river somewhere. Give me a farm. Let me work on. And I'm fully rested. I'm content. It doesn't take that much. Because that, that extra laptop, that extra computer, that extra thing you got, now became your idol. Now, I can't wait to wear that dress. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to show off this. You get excited about showing off your new car, your new dress, your new toy. You get so excited, you become a gospel of things. You, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you, you are now a preacher of things. You are sharing a gospel of other things and not sharing the gospel of Christ. You are busy emphasizing, look, look at the things I have, and you don't even mention Jesus. People will be fortunate uh, to hear you say, oh, by the way, after this three-hour presentation about how I build this kingdom, Jesus helped me. They may be fortunate to hear you say that Jesus was involved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you love God, but the enemy has brought idols in our midst, idols in our life, idols, 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 and, and it's time to break off. It's time to separate. It's time to purify. Because you can know God, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let him not think he shall receive anything from God. So you are praying for God, but you are saying, God, I want to know you by your heart. It's somewhere else. Doesn't the Bible say that with their lips they praise me, but their heart? Hallelujah. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 54. Bible says, O death, where is your sting? So when this corruptible has put on incorruptible, <clears throat> excuse me, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall he, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Even though they are never satisfied, there is a victory in Christ that gives us power over the thirsty death, over thirsty hell, over the thirsty attitude of man for the things of this world. There is victory in Christ. Verse number 56, the sting of death is sin, and the, and the strength of the sin is law. But thanks be to God who gives us what? Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to overcome the vanity of this world is to set your affection on Jesus. The only way to, to take your eyes off of worthless idols, things that keep you from praying, things that keep you from serving God. There are things and there are people that are keeping you from serving God. This, this is actually a challenge to push you from, I am doing okay in the house of God, to I am doing great. Why is your work with God just okay? Does he deserve just okay? Other things, people know you as a hero. I mean, I mean, you, you, you are the best pool player. I mean, you are, are the best dancer. You are the best. The people know you and they praise you for other things, but they don't praise you and say, wow, man, he loves God. Man, she loves God. Let him who boasts, boast what? That he knows. Jeremiah, let him who boasts, boast that he knows me. Somebody say amen. So when we repent of all of these things, when we set our affections right unto God, when we seek his face, there is one assignment unto us based on Luke 22, verse number 32. Devil has sought to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And then what he said, that when you are restored, 
go back and strengthen your brethren. So when you forsake all worthless idols, then you go back and tell other people that you have forsaken your God. It is time for you to come home. It is very hard to preach a gospel that you don't live. It is very hard when you are pursuing worthless idols to tell somebody else forsake worthless idols. It's very hard because you feel guilty as you speak. You know what? No, 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 no. Let's talk about something else. You will change topics because as you speak, there is conviction. So that's why we get to a place where we don't want to share the gospel at all because it is so convicting. It is the power of God for your life. God will change your life and you're like, mm, yeah, I've not been doing this in a long time. But when you are when, when you have experienced that salvation of God and that place where you are back to the love of your youth. Mm. He brought me into his banquet table, right? His banner over me is love. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I have been young and I'm old and I never seen the righteous forsaken of their seed begging for bread. I love the presence of the Lord. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me and wash me with his up and I will be clean. That place of, of surrender in his presence, I pray that that is the most important part of your life. You can preach on anything else. 20 steps to prosperity, 25 steps to increase. That doesn't move anything. Doesn't move anything. I can, I can talk about the anointing. But all that is based on where is your heart? Are you bowing down to ungodliness? Are you bowing down to your flesh? Are you bowing down to sin? Or is your heart so set on God that you are willing to offend people and offend the devil in order to please him? Hallelujah. 